Appendicitis literally means inflammation of the appendix. The appendix is a small tube that hangs off the cecum of the large intestine. For a long time, we didn't know what the appendix was for, but now we think it's to help maintain the normal flora of the gut. Normal flora is another way of saying healthy bacteria. What causes the appendix to get inflamed is sometimes called a fecalith, which is a poop rock. A little poop rock can get stuck inside the appendix causing the inflammation. But it can also be a viral, bacterial, and a parasitic infection, as well as trauma and injury. The person that's at risk for getting appendicitis is going to be a young person that has a family history of appendicitis and has cystic fibrosis. The main sign and symptom that the patient presents with is going to be abdominal pain. It starts periumbilical, meaning around the umbilicus, and then it starts moving towards the right lower quadrant. The location where the pain is is also called McBurney's point. This is the point where the appendix is, and it's exactly one-third of the way from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. The patient can also experience nausea, vomiting, and anorexia, so they won't want to eat anything. They can also have a fever, usually low-grade, and elevated WBCs. One of the complications of appendicitis is peritonitis. This happens when the appendix ruptures. Peritonitis is inflammation of the peritoneal cavity, the sac that holds your guts. This is a medical emergency and it needs to be taken care of right away. The nurse's job is to be able to identify the signs and symptoms of peritonitis. So you need to know that peritonitis causes severe abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, distended abdomen, and diminished bowel sounds. So when you put your stethoscope, you won't hear it as well. The other symptoms that this can cause include a hard, rigid, board-like abdomen, so their abdomen is very hard, positive rebound tenderness, so when you press down it hurts on the way up, and symptoms of infection like fever, tachycardia, tachypnea, dizzy, sweaty, pale. Now what you want to do to fix this is get antibiotics and get the patient to surgery. So in order to do this, you have to call the doctor. If no one realizes the patient has these symptoms of peritonitis, then the patient can progress into something called sepsis, which is an infection of the blood, eventually leading to septic shock and all the organs failing. The diagnostic needed for appendicitis is going to be an ultrasound. This is the most common way to diagnose appendicitis, especially in kids, because of the radiation that comes with CT scans. So when appendicitis is suspected, the nursing interventions that you want to do include making sure the patient's NPO, this is so they're ready to go for surgery, Putting the patient in the side-lying or semi folders position with the knees flex helps with the pressure and relieves some pain. You can also use ice packs, but not heat packs. Make sure you don't apply heat to the appendix, otherwise it'll burst. Same thing with touching it. Make sure you don't apply too much pressure on the appendix or it can burst. The medical intervention involved in appendicitis includes pain control and antibiotics. Now the real treatment for appendicitis is a surgical intervention. It's called an appendectomy, and it can be done two ways either through laparoscopic approach or an open appendectomy. Laparoscopic appendectomies are when the doctors make these tiny little incisions on the abdomen and insert tools in order to remove the appendix. It's only about one to two days of hospitalization before the patient is discharged if they have a laparoscopic appendectomy. However, with an open appendectomy, it's a lot more invasive and it takes around three days of hospitalization. Overall, laparoscopic procedures are a lot safer and more clinically beneficial for the patient. One side effect that's important to note after laparoscopic procedures is right shoulder tip pain. This happens because the abdomen is inflated with CO2 and CO2 rises and it causes irritation on the phrenic nerve, causing referred pain on the right shoulder. Referred pain just means pain that is felt in one part of the body, which is actually caused by injury or irritation in another part of the body. All right, guys, that's everything you need for appendicitis.